Hello guys and welcome to the last lesson for the remedial course of mechanics and the environment in which we're going to talk about circular motion a little bit. It's going to be a very, uh, two very simple problems and then dynamics. So now I'm going to recording myself, pre-recording myself because I believe that it's a best, it's a better option, you know, because um, when I stream live from Teams, the audio quality and the uh, and the uh, image quality are not the same as as having the video completed and uploaded to YouTube and then showing it to you. To you. So it's it's a much different uh, experience. And so I'm, I'm I'm doing that. Okay. So first I'm gonna we're gonna go through circular motion. Uh, uh, and then dynamics. Okay, so stage three is circular motion and stage four is dynamics. So This is a little wrong. Let me let me correct this. The kitchen of Jesus laws and circular motion. That's it Okay, so the first thing is this the first the first part is the circular motion It's very simple very very simple. I'm gonna do two problems and you're gonna do two which are extremely similar to the ones I solved. So the first problem is this. It goes like this. A cyclist travels around a circular track of radius 6 meters. So let's stop right there and let's draw right away if we can. So we have a cyclist that is traveling around a circular track. So we draw the circle or less. <coughs> and we draw the radius 6 meters ok, that's it and we have the cyclist traveling around the circle like so so my cyclist is right there ok, and then it says if his initial angular position is 20 degrees and his angular displacement is known to be 55 what is his final angular position? Okay, so first let me tell you about this. Whenever you talk about circular motion, uh, well, basically whenever you talk about motion, you need to draw first the Cartesian plane. Like so. Okay, I'm going to draw a Cartesian plane or a frame of reference, like it's, it's, all, it's also known. Okay. And the, the, or, the origin of the Cartesian plane should go through the center of the circle in this case. That's the best option. Okay, so what is this stuff about angular position and angular displacement and all that stuff? Okay, it's, it's something very simple. It's, it's, the idea is extremely simple. Look at this statement. They tell you that his initial angular position is 20 degrees. What does that mean? It means this. First of all, where is 20 degrees, more or less, more or less? It's about over here, right? It's about this, this angle, 20 degrees. And what that statement means is basically that the cyclist started to travel, because it was in its initial angular position, it started to travel over here. This is the initial position of, of the cyclist. It's not this, okay? I, I just drew this as a reference. In reality, it started the, the motion over here, right there in this position. And so I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that this is the initial angular position. And I'm going to represent that with these letters. This is angular position and the I4 initial. And I'm going to I'm gonna, uh, specify that data over here. The angular position is 20 degrees. The initial, the initial angular position. And they tell me that his angular displacement is known to be 55. And what is the angular displacement? By definition, the angular displacement is written in this way, delta theta, and it's the final angular position minus the initial angular position. That is by definition what, what angular displacement means. This is angular displacement, this is final angular position, and this is initial angular position. So if I know that this value is 55 degrees, I have to substitute that in here. 
and then I, I continue writing my equation, final angular position minus the initial angular position, which is 20. And that's it, guys. Now we can find the final angular position, which is, by isolation, it's going to be 75. Okay? So this will be the final angular position of the cyclist. And if I, if I draw that, that would be more or less 75 degrees is more or less over here. Okay, it's, it's all of this angle, 75, it's almost 90. So this will be the final angular position of the cyclist. And what this means, what this number means, the, the angular displacement, which is 55, is that the actual travel or the actual uh, displacement of the cyclist, but uh, in an angular way. So basically what, what this 55 means is all of this angle, all of this angle. This is 55 degrees, okay? This is 75, this is 20. And it makes sense, right? If you, if you, if you want to get this angle, all you have to do is subtract 75, which is all of this angle, all of this angle, 75, minus this little bit, which is 20, and you get 55. And that, that is the interpretation, the visual interpretation of this quantity, the angular displacement. Okay? So that's, that's how you solve this problem. It's very simple. Okay, next. Okay, I was just checking something. Okay, the next problem. Second problem. In here, we're going to talk about something called angular velocity and tangential velocity. And again, you know, we don't have much time in order to go into the details of what these things are. I could just give you a very quick uh, explanation of what these things are. Angular velocity and tangential velocity. So let's, let's start to read. The problem. It says a kid is on a merry-go-round. A merry-go-round is un, es a, es ese juego que está en los parques que da vueltas. Okay? No, no sé cómo se llama bien en español. La rueda, no sé. So we have this kid which is on that that thing, and that thing is rotating with an angular velocity of one radian per second. If the kid is placed one meter from the center, what is its tangential velocity? So one more time. What we want to do first is draw the Cartesian plane or the frame of reference and then draw the circle or the merry-go-round in this case around which the, the kid rotates, right? I mean, he, he is on the, on the merry-go-round. So let's, let's draw that kid. Let's draw that kid. Let's, put, let's place that kid over here. And this guy is rotating like so, okay? You, you know you know how it should look in real life. <coughs> okay, so, uh, without doing too much of an explanation, because like I, like I said, we don't have much time in, in, to, go, to enter into theoretical concepts. What this thing is, the angular velocity, and what this thing is, the tangential velocity, are, uh, what they mean is this. The angular velocity is very simple to understand. It's just how many, how many, how much of an angle the particle travels per second. Okay, one radian per second would be more or less this speed. Okay, because remember, I don't know if you remember this, that one radian was 57.3 degrees, more or less. So basically, what this, what this is telling you is that this kid or the miracle round is rotating at at this many degrees per second. So in one second, 50, 57, which is more or less all of here. And then 57 in another second, 57 degrees in another second, and so on. So it's rotating at a velocity, at an angular velocity of 57.3 degrees per second. Okay, maybe the, the, the angular velocity could be much higher, like, like so, or it could be slower. Okay, this is a slower angular velocity. So that's the idea, 
okay? And the tangential velocity is a little more complex to understand. I'm not gonna get in, in, in there. I'm just gonna tell you how to calculate it, okay? Because that's I think that's the wisest thing to do. Okay, so we have this angular velocity of one radian per second. You have to keep it like that in radians, it's very important. Don't don't convert this into degrees per second. Okay, so what is the relationship between angular velocity and tangential velocity? First of all, angular velocity is represented with this symbol. Uh, it, it's not a W, it's called an omega. And because the W is this, okay? And it's, they are different. They look, they look uh, similar, but they are not the same. They're not the same. W, and this is called omega. It's a Greek letter. And uh, tangential velocity, it's written with a normal V. Okay, so what is the relationship between these two quantities? It's, it's this. The tangential velocity is equal to the radius of the motion, of the circular motion, times the angular velocity, which is omega. Okay, and that's it, guys. That's, that's basically the whole thing. How do we calculate the tangential velocity? I just substitute the radius, which in this case is one meter, okay, because the kit is one meter from the center of the miracle round. This is one meter, so that's the radius. And omega, how much is omega? One radian per second. One radian per second. And now the tangential velocity will be just the multiplication of these numbers, which in this case is one meter per second. Okay, uh, when you perform the multiplication of these two quantities, one meter times one radian per second, you're gonna ignore the radians, okay? You're just, you're just gonna use meters and seconds. That's it. Again, the reasons are very, are, are complex to understand. We don't have, I don't have time to explain to you why you have to ignore the radians. Just do it, okay? Just do it. Just pay attention to the meters and the seconds, and that that will be your your solution. Okay, uh, I, I cannot go into the details of why this unit is or this unit is ignored. So this is the solution to this problem. The tangential velocity will be one meter per second, and that's it, guys. These are the two problems for circular motion. Those are the only two problems that I'm going to teach you how to solve. Then uh, you you have to solve two problems which are extremely similar to this basically the same problems and then we can go into the dynamics which because that's a little hotter and more time consuming so go ahead and solve these two problems